Hello! In this presentation, I'll share some tips about how to design a PowerPoint to effectively help students learn, and then I'll also share a few design tips at the end. I just want to clarify that this presentation is not just based on stuff that I made up. It's primarily from the research of Dr. Richard Mayer, who's pictured on this slide. He is a very accomplished researcher in the field of multimedia learning. And also the three books on this slide have been very instrumental in designing this presentation. As this slide is demonstrating in the chart, people are very visual and learn more effectively from pictures only versus text only. So what I'm going to recommend in this presentation is actually kind of a hybrid approach where you have some images, if at all possible, a little bit of text, but not too much, and some audio elaboration as well. Now when you're choosing images for your presentation, it's really important to make sure that the images do actually reinforce the concept that you're making. Um, sometimes people will want to include decorative images in the hopes that they increase interest and engagement, but that is definitely not the case. Mayer's found consistently in his research that unrelated images are very distracting because the students are trying to make sense out of the images. So you're wondering when I'm going to refer to this cat and how this has something to do with my slide. It doesn't because I'm making the point that unrelated images are distracting. So keep it simple. If you can't find a good image, don't feel like you need to include one. As Neil is demonstrating on this slide, make it your goal to stop using bullets. The end presentation should not look like a PowerPoint presentation. So if you think of like a TED talk, they are probably using PowerPoint or Keynote, but it doesn't look like PowerPoint. So when you start using bullets, that's when it starts looking like a PowerPoint. Also, when you're tempted to use bullets, that probably means your slides are getting too complex. So you might want to start breaking your slides down into more slides when you're tempted to use bullets. So I bet you've all seen this before. This is the generic starting screen of PowerPoint. And as you can see, it tries to make you use bullets in here, but don't let PowerPoint tell you how to design your presentation. I usually just keep that title box at the top and then include some text boxes if necessary, and of course images in the presentation. So in general, each of your PowerPoint slides should consist of three things. Your graphics or images, if at all possible, the slide text, which I'll explain more about in a minute, and your audio elaboration. And all three of these things should be revolving around the same one concept. So if you start to find that you're combining multiple concepts in one slide, that's when you might want to think about creating additional slides to break those concepts down a little bit further. So you're probably wondering, how do I know what text to put on the slide? So your text should be just a summary of the main concept and then you elaborate verbally on that concept further. So the text on the slide should be very brief and it should be enough to give the viewer just a taste of what you're going to get into. And the point what, that I'm making with this image on the slide is that you are necessary to provide the elaboration. Without you, the students will not have the depth of information that they need. So here's something that a lot of people find interesting. A guy named Michael Alley did a study, and he had two groups of participants. One group had a PowerPoint with complete sentences. The other had a PowerPoint with sentence fragments, you know, the typical way people do PowerPoint. Same content with both. And it turns out the complete sentences group scored higher on a test afterwards. Now, I don't know if this has been duplicated. I don't know the statistical significance, but I have always thought this myself as a learner, that sentence fragments can be misinterpreted so easily, whereas complete sentences are so much clearer. So that's my hypothesis about why. Now, of course, when you're writing complete sentences, they can get very wordy. So it's important to very carefully choose your words and tighten up the wording as much as possible. Probably the number one thing that people do when they start designing their PowerPoints to enhance learning better is breaking down their old slides into more slides. So here's an example of a traditional PowerPoint slide. And the best way to help students learn is to actually break that down into at least five different slides. So over here on the right side now, we have an intro slide that says search engine basics, where you would set up the topic for the students. And then each slide contains one of the previous bullet points, which has been rephrased into a complete sentence. And the slide also includes a corresponding graphic. 
People's attention spans are about 10 minutes. So when you're recording videos for online, I recommend to keep them around 10 minutes or so. It can be difficult. I mean, maybe sometimes you need to go up to about 13 minutes or so. But remember that the YouTube limit is 15 minutes. So that's a good reason to keep it under 15 at least. So on this slide, I like to share this with people who teach in the 50 minute class session and say, well, why can't I record a 50 minute video because my class is 50 minutes long. Well, it turns out they're not paying attention very well during a 50 minute class session anyway. So as you can see, the first 10 minutes are high attention. The last, it goes up again. There's a few spikes in the middle. But in general, this length of a class does not work well for people. So the beauty with online is that you can break your content down into little 10 minute segments so they can do something with that content after each time. Or at the very least, they get to take a break every 10 minutes or so. Now when you're creating presentation for the online format, a minute can actually feel like a really long time if nothing is changing on the slide. So when people are face to face and they're looking at you, they have a little bit more of engagement, but when they're just looking at a slide and nothing's happening, a minute feels like a really long time. So I highly recommend using animations or breaking your slides down to provide more visual interest as your presentation is going along. One principle that I really want to emphasize is simplicity. And that's a key element of the presentation Zen book, which I highly recommend at least paging through if you're interested in presentation design. And you probably notice this on websites, where if you go to a website, sometimes it's just so busy, you can't find what you need. Whereas if the site was simpler, then you would be able to see what you need because there's less information there. So you can apply the same principle to presentation design, where if you want to really emphasize some points, make them big, Avoid PowerPoint templates and all these extra things that you don't need to emphasize the point that you're getting across. Now the rest of this presentation is focused a bit more on design tips rather than things that specifically influence learning. But it's important to remember though that through your design, you can focus on creating what's called cognitive ease for your learners, making it easy for them to learn basically. So some of these tips will help with that and some of them are just modern graphic design principles. I really like to use a white background on my slides, partly out of laziness, because a lot of images that you find will have a white background. So if you use a white background on your slides, they just blend in and look seamless like it does on this slide. Now if you weren't sure what I was referring to on the last slide, here's the same slide that you just saw with a blue background. So this image actually has a pretty significant white background with it. And if you know how to use Photoshop and other image editing things, you can remove the background. But I don't really want to spend that level of time usually. So in a white background, they just blend in. Try to make your images full screen as much as possible. They just have a lot more impact and are a lot more memorable this way. So here's an example of a traditional PowerPoint slide where you just have the image as a small thing and you have the text at the top. So I wouldn't say that this is necessarily wrong, but it does give you a much more PowerPoint feel than the last slide. Of course, try not to use low quality images and definitely don't use images that have watermarks in them. So this is a very bad example of an image right here. It's blown up to be full screen. Sometimes if you find a good image, but it's getting pixelated as you make it bigger, that's when it's definitely okay to just leave it as a small boxier picture on your, on your page. Now the design standard these days is to use real people rather than cartoons or clip art. So on this slide, I'm just showing the difference between the clip art dude on the left and then the real person on the right who are both demonstrating confusion. So definitely try to avoid the use of the clip art people and use real people now. That's a consistent theme in all of the books that I've read about presentation design. Now, as far as font goes, um, Calibri is the default in the Windows version of PowerPoint. I generally change it from Calibri just so it doesn't look quite as PowerPoint-ish, um, but I use something that's still very similar. Try to avoid overused fonts like Comic Sans or Papyrus, and then definitely don't use anything that's difficult to read. Now at this point in the presentation, you're probably getting kind of overwhelmed because what most people say when I do this is that this is a really different way of designing PowerPoint. So I just wanna let you know that you don't have to be perfect. Try to implement as many of these principles as you can, but you also have to balance this with your workload because you don't even wanna know how long I've spent on this presentation. It can be very time consuming, so do what you can. 
If you're recording a PowerPoint tutorial for an online or hybrid class, I highly recommend adding your audio and publishing it into a video format, and ideally streaming it somewhere like YouTube. The reason for that is because if you give the students just a PowerPoint with audio in it, first of all, it's going to be a humongous file. Second, they may not have PowerPoint. Third, they may not understand how to actually watch it with the audio. So if you make it into a video for them, it's going to be a much more user-friendly format, and you'll avoid a lot of technical problems. Okay, let's recap the main concepts from this presentation. Stop the bullets. Think of Neo. Whenever you want to use bullets, try to break down your slides further. So your old slides, you're probably going to need to break down if you've been doing the typical PowerPoint. Feel free to use as many slides as you need. Add graphics, images, diagrams, whatever you need for your content so the students have some sort of visual representation of what you're getting at. And now your slide text, remember, should be a summary of the concept on the slide, ideally a complete sentence rather than a fragment, and should not be overly wordy. Keep the whole thing short and simple overall. Feel free to use white space and try to keep it around 10 minutes or so, definitely under 15 for that YouTube limit. And overall, don't let it look like a PowerPoint. When you're done, you should have just used PowerPoint like a blank slate. I'm happy to help UWEC faculty create their PowerPoints for online tutorials, so if you're having troubles applying the principles to your PowerPoints, feel free to let me know and I can mock up a few examples that might help you understand a little bit better. I can also definitely help with the technical aspects of adding audio and publishing the video, so please contact me if I can help at all.